Hello everybody. In this video I will show you how you can model in this spiral staircase. I will go into details about how I will use the sketches to pre-plan my design and then use the solid modeling tools together with the drafting elements Shaper gives us to perfectly model this design. So we will end up with manufacturable elements. So let's start with a very basic architectural element. The height here is 270 centimeters. If you are in inches for this video, you want to set the unit system to centimeters. And for this exercise, I conveniently also positioned the architecture perfectly away from the center point where we will actually start constructing our uh, first sketch and then position the spiral staircase. Okay, so let's get started. I will go to the top view and where Y and X meet, that is where I would like to have a circle. So the circle I move to the center, I can lock it. The diameter I would like to be five centimeters. That is the column uh, or the steel column, the individual wooden um, steps will be connected to. In this design, I will use also a simplified construction. And then based on your own manufacturing capabilities, you can modify everything, obviously. Or you can take a look at the supplied sample model, which has the finished design. The, that model is a little bit more detailed. So we will create another circle. So this circle, I would like to have a radius of seven. Five is the steel core and the two centimeter around it, that is actually where the wooden tread would just go around the metal part. Very good. So now we need to define where our step would be. I will draw a little bit loosely, just a horizontal line, connect these two lines. Now this line, I would like to be perfectly centered to the midpoint there. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that this line has a midpoint snap point and I draw a line to the center of the circle. And then I select this line and tell it to be vertical horizontal. And that perfectly centers this line. This line should be around 30 centimeters and the length here is 53. So this is now already a part where based on uh, what type of spiral staircase you have built, you can have a lot of influence in the width and the length of these steps. And obviously you also have to follow your local um, commercial and residential construction code. Now these lines here, they're a little bit um, loose and I want this line to be tangent to the arc. So I select the line, the arc or the circle, click tangent. And then this way, this line perfectly flows via G1 into that circle. Very good. Now I have a dimension for the length, a dimension for the end, and also my radius elements. Let's assume this is our center core and we first start planning out our design. So this should be 18 centimeters. I select those three uh, profiles here, that should be five, double tap everything and then move it up 13 centimeters. You see I use um, complete centimeters that makes the construction and also the planning significantly easier. So also make sure you have your snapping turned on. Okay, now this edge is a little bit hard for a spiral staircase, so we'll delete this. I will hide this element, then I will double tap on this sketch again create another circle and I will do this to there 
and so how big is this one? Well, this one has to be 53 because that's the same length like this one. So watch out now what I can do with this. Here I have my, let's say, column and then there with these three profiles. I have my wooden step. Bring this one up. Call this one step. Okay, so you can see already this will look much, much nicer when we do the spiral stuff. Okay. Now, we have here a height of 270 centimeters. And how do I, how did I figure out 18 centimeters? That was also how many steps can I squeeze in there? So I looked up at the um, uh, construction requirements. So 18 centimeters was suggested for the, the height. 270 divided by the amount of steps gave me then 18 uh, or the correct amount. And then how much do I have to rotate it? So I have 14 copies in the end I have 15 steps and I want to do a perfect 360 degree pass. So check this out. I will make a new folder and I just call this memory for the moment copies. Then I select this and this. I hide also my sketch, turn on the copy command, center this to the center of the circle and then I move this one up to their 18 centimeters. And those two, I just move in there. Very good. And then now I have to rotate it, but by how much? Well, if I have 360 steps, uh, sorry, 360 degrees, I have to divide this by the amount of steps, 14, which makes 25.714 rotation. So we have between each step is a sufficient amount of overlap. That's very important. Okay, so now I can do another copy. Move this one up, turn the copy off, and then do another rotation. 25.714. Okay. Also select two elements at the same time move this one then up instead of 18 it goes up 36 and then for the rotation this will be 51.428 very good now because i have four elements already in place i can select them all make another copy this goes up 72 and for the rotation this is 102.857 so you see it's actually not that labor intensive to quickly populate a design with individual steps when you kind of like use some smart workarounds and try to quantify your steps. There, okay, now I can do this one more time. This will be higher than we need. Okay, there, and then I have to rotate it. 102.857. Very good. Okay, there. So now this, 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 and this can go there. That's perfectly at the correct height. So this uh, surface and that surface, they are at the same position. So you see, that was not actually very complicated. Now, in, I would consider this a pre preconceptual stage. I'm just trying to figure out how much space does the spiral staircase, the design I want to have for the spiral staircase occupy. 
So I would suggest always not to work with very complicated geometry at the beginning, rather like in this case, do very basic, uh, simple studies. And then we can delete this, refine this element and then multiply it again. Very good. Okay. That's also why I kept all this into this folder. So if I have to delete it or I want to make a variation, I have actually the ability to quickly select the starting element or all the multiplied elements. Good. So let's take a look at the handrail. How can we do this? One of the advantages by having drawn everything right where X and Y meet is that this step perfectly lines up with the y-axis. So I can go to the left view if I want. And also because I strictly follow the grid, I can draw somewhere a line to somewhere there. So because I use a grid, you can see this line perfectly rests now also on the, the step. Now I would like to have this to be five centimeters. Very good. And let's move this whole sketch over. Good. See, not too complicated. This point I will lock. And this should be around 110 centimeters. go back to left and on top I would like to position a circle which has a diameter of 2.5 centimeters now this either we are the grid snapping again I can perfectly position you see how the line actually really rests on there or I can also do it this way and draw a vertical line that has to be or vertically constrained and then this end point I will snap to there same way very good cool now the same thing I will do up there so we have a distance of five centimeters so now we'll go to the top I will draw a line down I will draw a line to there so okay actually hit it perfectly so there, I can lock this. This is 110. And zoom out. Go to there. Make a circle, 2.5 centimeters. Here, I just draw a line and snap. Very good. So these two circles I created, they will or should be used to run actually uh, or be the cross section of a handrail that can go like a spiral. So for the spiral, which is a revolve command, I need also a center axis. So somewhere here at the center along the Z axis and draw a line. If I zoom, sorry, if I rotate a little bit, you can see where everything is. So check this out. I will now go to a top view, rotate my view, then I go tools, revolve, select this filling, next select then this line. I would like to have one 360 degree pass, but for the height minus 252. That is actually the distance between uh, the two rings and actually instead of minus it is positive 252 there very good so now we have a very quick visualization of where the handrail would be okay let's call this one handrail study we'll later actually modify and replace perfect this one We'll clean up my design a little bit. I can only make an emphasis on really giving logical names to everything you create. 
so that once you see these elements, it's un easy to understand what you're working on. Oops, not spot. Steps layouts. Okay. So. working on the, the spiral part. Let's take a look at here. I would like to run a two, one centimeter pipe vertical along it. So yeah, can in this case use my step, double tap it. Well, it's a little bit tricky. So here again, I will turn everything so all the other elements are not in my view besides the handrail. Okay, so now the handrail is gone too. And then I will draw a circle, position the circle right on the y-axis. One, let's say 1.5 centimeters. And now this needs to be One second, or like there to be a line, and this line to the edge that should be the five centimeters. There you can see this is a little bit too short. I also have multiple sketches there, so I will turn off some of these sketches. So this now should be five that moves it over. Let's take a look at the spiral, and you see perfectly it lines up. Very good. Okay, so I could, if I want to use sweep and so like this profile sweep along this line, very good. Could also extrude it, the, extrude the circle, the needed length. And here is then my element. Okay, so right now we see everything overlaps there a little bit. This face I can extend a little bit like this, then I deselect everything and I can round this edge just a notch. Push this one further in turn on my show hidden edges so I can see to what degree I'm actually inserting this cylinder into the handrail. Now it's also up to you to define how do you want to do the connections. Are there actually openings at the bottom where this goes in or are there other elements where this can connect to? Maybe 1.5 centimeters after all is too big. We can always select a cylinder, as you can see, just then tap the dimension and we change the radius. Very good. So we don't necessarily have to change the, the sketch. Okay, good. Now, um, we call this one maybe a vertical post. Then I move this one somewhat to there. Very good. We have the handrail and we need to make another copy. So I turn on copy, bring this to there. And 25.714, I would like to divide by two. 25.714 divided by two is 12.5 seven. Very good. So you see that this is still on that one step. And then here I can push this one up a little bit into it. Very good. Now, this element is actually very useful because it will connect two steps. These two elements now I can make a copy. In this case, then, as always, 
0.714. Turn off the copy, and then I move this one up 18 centimeters. There. And then I would do exactly the same with the additional or other elements. So there I did it one more time. So now I have four. This whole thing goes up 72. And then this will rotate 102.857. Very, very good. Okay. I will leave it at this because you can understand the, uh, oh, actually, I think I did it one, one too far. I've, as you can see there, there's one hole, not a big deal. But I, I will leave it at this and not uh, completely fill the, the staircase because it will take a little bit of time and I think you understood the steps we did. So, but just this one element there, I would like to completely fill there. Let's go to the center. There. And then zoop, move those up. Fifty-one, yeah, very good. Turn this off and then wrote this over by fifty-one point four two eight. And so these are actually correct. They're just too high, so bring this down. Very good. Fifteen. Good. Maybe this was actually nice. I made a mistake because it showed you how still how easy it was for me to fill in the missing elements and perfectly position them because I use um, clean units for the vertical movement and then specified rotation uh, values. There we are. Okay, good. So this one here, I can just make a copy and move this one up 252. There we are. This thread here, mm, that's not necessarily good. I would like to extend this. So I will select the surface with a finger double tap on it. Then I draw a line to there, I draw a line to there this line I draw to there and this line I snap to there. You noticed that by doing this, actually the, oh no, one second, I have to actually select all those vertical posts, minus this one, make a copy, and then I put those all in there and then this I will turn off visibility wise. What I wanted to show is you see by having and dragged actually lines onto edges of geometry and projected these elements in, which is a really nice feature of the sketch engine in Shaper. So we don't need to project manually, we can just simply draw this to it. So there. Okay, good. Of course there I hit this one, which is why it didn't, didn't snap it. And there we are. Good. Now, horizontal, horizontal, U to U, please be tangent. Now let's take a look at everything we have. I would need to finish the sketch a little bit. And there should be an opening. That opening should be five. Very good. If I rotate my view, there we are. I can select this now, extrude it down, five, and there is my other element. This one I remove because I don't need it. So I replace this actually with a more custom landing part. Very nice. So let's actually 
organize our scene. I personally like to have sketches and sketches and objects and objects, folders and folders, always somewhat next to each other. Very good. And this I will delete. I don't really need it anymore. Good. Where's my handrail? There it is. So how can I now continue this? I can use the extrude command, select this ring and do a small extrusion. No, I would like actually that this will flow at its height along kind of like this corner. So I need to create a plane there. So go add construction and axis through a cylinder. Now this is at the center. Again, add construction plane this time through edge at an angle. And let's rotate this 90. Very good. This and now I can delete. This was just only a helper for the moment. I will select the project command and onto that surface or the construction plane I just selected. I would like to project these two lines. I select it of the geometry, select the construction plane, click done. And it gives me, if I then turn everything off, kind of like an idea of where everything edgewise would be. I also see here, there's the axis. What is the distance of so five? So that means I select these two lines and lock them. Draw a line to this axis to there. What's the distance five? That is good. That's the way how it should be. Very good. Then this and this I can turn off. So the plane and axis are gone. I will trim this element and I would like to oops, draw another arc in there. I'm simply opening this for the moment. And so, so this will go to there. Then I can also remove all this. I don't need it anymore. Very good. And now with an, an arc motion, I draw in an arc that's also tangent to these other lines. Very good. So with that actually done, let's take a look at where's the handrail. The handrail is uh, roughly there. Okay, good. So then we can go tools and sweep and say you sweep along this line and this and this. Very good. It's a little bit longer than we need. You can select this face and just pull it down and then match it there. Okay. I go to here, transform, translate and say this face I would like to translate onto this face. And then it perfectly moves it horizontally. Even while I selected um, two points which were more diagonal away, because that's an extra uh, sweep command, it only can move it along one axis. Very good. So you see, this was actually very, very easy to create this handrail so that it follows all these elements. And where's my landing part there? But let me show you a trick how we can do this connection even better. 
So this and this I will put into a folder. Let's call this one handrail initial idea. Good. And the landing I will put into copy so I can turn all, all this on off very easily. There, good. So handrail I will turn off. And I will turn off this and the post. I need to see the spiral one. Okay. Select the spiral, double tap. No. I can draw a small element like this. If I zoom out a little bit, you see that is actually a small rectangle. So check this out what I'm going to do. I will do a revolve of this rectangular filling along my axis by 252. Very good. Okay. So nice. And then I will go to the opposite. Where's actually the handrail handrail platform. You see that's the reason again why it makes sense to name everything. I will do a sweep of this along there, there and there. And I only have to bring obviously this a little bit back. So I need to be careful how I zoom in there. Very nice. To there. And I will hide now literally all the other sketches so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. I would like to translate and move this face from there to there. So think about this actually as some bent sheet metal. We're going to weld this together via the tools and union command. Very good. Okay. Now this element has two sharp edges. This one and this one. And I can select them both and fillet them. Maybe six, oh, five. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. All is good. And the reason why I created this as an, an object, so check this out now. I will go back to my spiral element there and then I will do just an extrude of this, including this one there. Mm, five, yeah, it's fine. And this whole thing I will just move back a little bit. Okay, let's turn everything off. Go tools and sweep this face of the cylinder. I would like to sweep along this edge, this edge, and this edge. And then we go to here and select this edge, this edge, and this edge. And zoom, there we have it. Now we have a really nice spiral staircase where we have a much better transition. Okay, so the rounding there we can see is uh, a lot better. So I used a common solid modeling approach to create a flat 
or uh, or a geometry with a sharp edge and then the resulting sharp edges I can use for other modeling commands. In my case, the sweep command. And the reason why I created this object is simply, I can delete it now because I don't need it. And that was, that was a nice helper to replicate this circle a little bit more back. I could have made also another sketch, but I would have been made my design a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at what we have. So this whole thing we will call uh, revolve path. And then this is actually sp uh, yeah, spiral and rail. Very good. Can make a new folder move this all in there call this handrail revised idea obviously on you know, this uh, this path we don't really need to be visible this was just only for uh, like a visual helper and we were using it as a 3d sketch element there on post there are the steps, copy, there are the other elements, there, cool. Okay, so here at the bottom, also there we could modify the design a little bit more. We just, uh, I will extrude this out a little bit, then the end I will clean leaf fill it a little bit so it's nice and soft and to design oh I would need to measure what's the length how many of these elements can I squeeze in I will here go with 20 centimeters 30 40 so 10 centimeter steps Here, and then I would do the same also uh, along the other direction too. Okay, good. So I hope that this explains the different strategies you can use to quickly create a spiral staircase, then how to use uh, some basic sketches to preview how your handrail or your spiral handrail could look and then if you want to have smoother transitions how we can use use this uh, the same sketch we created but then through our solid modeling trick create a much nicer and smoother spiral handrail